Today I'm going to share with you some of the best investing and life advice from my favorite and arguably the most successful investor in history, Warren Buffett. I was browsing Twitter the other day and I came across this thread and thought it was a really interesting topic to discuss with you. For those who don't already know who Warren Buffett is, he's one of the wealthiest people in the world. He's well known for pioneering value investing. He's also known for being an excellent speaker, philanthropist, and chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, has delivered annualized returns of over 20% since 1965 on investments in public equities. Surprisingly, that's double what the S&P 500 has returned in that time period. And if it's your first time, I'm Erica, I'm a lawyer, and I love talking about finance. Let's dive in. It takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. Warren Buffett says it best, we are each a business of one. You're in charge of yourself and only you. This means your reputation, branding, and what people think of you. All it takes is one decision or mistake to ruin what you've built. Buffett reminds us to stop and think before we act. Building your reputation and getting people to trust you can take 20 years, but knocking it all down, that can happen in five minutes. Price is what you pay, value is what you get. Rather than focusing on the price of something, look at its value. When something is in high demand, you're gonna pay more for it. But don't focus on that, focus on the value it provides. Whether you're talking about investments or items you buy at the store, there's always an intrinsic value. Look at the value and decide if the price is worth it. Never give up searching for the job that you're passionate about. Warren Buffett says it best, put pay aside and focus on the job. What job would make your heart sing and make you feel content? That's the job you want. The pay will come, but if you're exerting yourself at a job you hate, even if it's the highest paying job in the world, it will leave you feeling empty. And if you know my personal story, I talked in this video about this point exactly. So instead, focus on yourself and what you want. That's when you've won the race. It's not about how much money you make, but about how happy you are. Don't save what's left after spending. Instead, spend what's left after saving. We're all guilty of this. We save after we spend. But Warren Buffett says that that's the wrong way to do it. If you save after you spend, you could be cutting yourself and your future short. Instead, you should save directly from your earnings and spend what's left after saving. It might take some time to get used to this, but one of the best ways to do it is to set up a direct deposit from your paycheck. Direct a portion of your earnings to your savings account, and then that way you don't have to worry about spending before you save. The best holding period is forever. When you invest, how long do you hold on to these investments? Warren Buffett says it should be forever or at least 10 years. He advises that you shouldn't invest in the asset if you don't see yourself investing in it for at least 10 years. Holding on to investments for the long term avoids impulsive moves and mistakes. It avoids actions out of greed or fear, both of which can cause you to cut yourself short. Admit your mistakes to yourself and everyone. Like everyone, Warren Buffett has made mistakes and costly ones at that. Does it make him a bad person or wrong? Of course not. So what does he do? He admits his mistake lets himself and others realize how things could have been different, and applies those principles moving forward. Since you can't change the past, you have to pick up the pieces and move forward using your newfound knowledge. No matter how much the mistake hurts, use it as a lesson to make things better going forward. The most important investment you can make is in yourself. You invest in stocks, real estate, and your retirement, but how often do you invest in yourself? You are your biggest asset. You'll have more money to invest in monetary things like your retirement plan and real estate when you invest in yourself. So how do you invest in yourself? There are three key areas to focus on. Communication, leadership, and business relationships. In short, surround yourself with like-minded, successful people. People who you want to be on your side as you succeed. Learn how to communicate with them and how to be a leader. That's how you invest in yourself and your future. In the business world, the rear view mirror is always clearer than the windshield. It's obvious that no one can predict the future, but what we can do is review what we've done in the past. In the business world, things change frequently. New competitors and challenges pop up daily. Focusing on the problems these competitors or challenges pose only causes anxiety because the future is unknown. What if instead you looked back and asked yourself questions? You could even ask your clients questions. What are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? What else would they like to see from you? 
Reflecting through the rear view mirror, you can see what you might need to change to make things look better in the future. This is a classic and one of my favorites. Be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Take a look at the stock market. When people are greedy, prices skyrocket. If you buy when people are greedy, you'll likely overpay for an asset. But if you buy when people are fearful, that's when prices drop and you can buy an asset for much less than it's worth. If you operate the opposite of the common investor, you'll be fearful and not buy when others are greedy and buy when others are fearful and selling. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. If you don't think about what you're doing and consciously plan out what you want to get and accomplish, you can't succeed. But when you know what you're doing and at least the direction you're going and have an action plan, you can succeed. The key is awareness. Successful investing takes time, discipline, and patience. Patience is probably the hardest thing to learn, yet it's the most valuable skill you can have. Patience is a virtue because it helps you to sit back during the hard times and wait it out, especially when it comes to investing. If you rush and sell an investment or buy while everyone else is, you won't be successful. It doesn't matter how talented or knowledgeable you are, it all comes down to patience, time, and discipline. Everything will run its course, but you have to be willing to wait for it to come to you. Pushing too hard only leads to a dead-end road, is what he says. Never invest in a business you can't understand. Believe it or not, there are things that even Warren Buffett doesn't understand. Take technology, for example. He passed on Google when they first went public. Why? Because it was a business that he didn't understand. Does he regret it today? Maybe, especially because he missed out on large gains, but Buffett made the choice that was right for him at that moment. He knew he didn't understand the business, so instead, he invested his money in businesses that he did understand. When he understands a business, he'll make a much smarter investment decision that'll pay off in the long run. Don't treat the stock market like a casino. Treating the stock market like a casino is like taking your retirement funds to the casino and putting them all on red. You wouldn't do that, right? You don't want to be gambling in the stock market. Don't invest in these crazy assets that don't have a history. Instead, focus on stable, well-run companies that have a proven track record and offer stable returns. No matter how big the returns are on an exotic or risky investment, that can't beat the stability of well-run companies. Someone's sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. You've likely heard the quote, always be kind. It's a spinoff of what Warren Buffett always says. Kindness pays off. You don't know when. It could be tomorrow, it could be 20 years from now, 100 years from now. Just like trees take years to grow, so do the kindness seeds that you plant today. I try to buy stock in businesses that are so wonderful that an idiot can run them because sooner or later, one will. It sounds like a cruel quote, but it actually protects your investments no matter what happens because when you choose companies to invest in that have a great business model and are incredibly successful, chances are no matter who runs the business, it will continue to do well. Next, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Save. I haven't done any card reviews yet on this channel, but I came across this very neat product that for every qualified dollar you spend on their debit card, they'll invest $1 on your behalf to help you earn more from your spending. The main purpose is to help you invest. As an example, if you spend $100 on a nice dinner, Save will invest $100 on your behalf in equivalent investments. This all takes place on the back end, so you're only liable for the $100 you paid for dinner. Past performance doesn't speak for future returns, but based on hypothetical back-tested performance, the card has an average return of 3%, sometimes more, sometimes less. Each month's matched investments will stay invested for a little over a year. As an example, the return for matched transactions in November will be paid out in cash to your account by December 2022. As for what they're investing in, it'll be a portfolio of up to 30 ETFs. When you sign up, Save will ask you how risky you want your portfolio to be to match your risk profile. I think it's a very neat product and a really simple introduction to the world of automatic investing. If you're interested, please click on the link below to give it a try. Diving back into the next one, games are won by players who focus on the playing field, not those whose eyes are glued to the scoreboard. Don't focus on how your stocks are performing day to day. You'll drive yourself crazy. If you can handle not looking at your stocks on the weekends, do the same thing during the week. 
Take a break from obsessing over your stocks and how they're performing. Instead, focus on the steps you're taking daily to achieve your financial goals. Let your investments be, just trust the process, stay with them long term so that you can see the average return that they promised rather than bailing when things go wrong. Overcome your fear of risk. There's no reward without risk. If you fear the risk, you'll never take chances and you'll only get mediocre returns in life. The way this applied to me is thinking back to when I quit my corporate law job. It was the biggest risk I'd ever taken in my life, but it's paid off massively. I didn't let the fear of failure stop me because frankly, I fear regret a lot more than I fear failure. Never use borrowed money to buy stocks. Borrowing money to buy stocks is like gambling. How do you know the stock will perform and that you'll be able to pay the money back? If it doesn't, you put yourself in a deeper hole than you were before you bought the stocks. So instead of trying to spend money that you don't have, start budgeting and saving from your paycheck. Maybe put a portion of each paycheck into an investment account like a Roth IRA or a 401k. What we learn from history is that people don't learn from history. If you look at the stock market, you'll see what Warren Buffett's talking about. People make the same mistakes repeatedly throughout history. Stock market crashes, bailouts, buying when stocks are overvalued and then dumping them when they're undervalued are all mistakes investors have made in the past and they're still making them today and will continue to make them. Don't be like them. We want to learn from past mistakes, both your own and from others. See how they can help you grow into a better investor, a better business professional, or even a better person. Aim for consistent profit over the long term. Focusing on the ups and downs of a company is like looking at a snapshot of it. Sure, it might make you quick money today, but what will it do down the road? Instead, look for consistent and stable companies because you don't want this volatility of unpredictable companies. Give your kids enough so that they can do anything, but not so much that they can do nothing. If you give your kids everything, they won't know how to work for the things that they want. They'll expect everything to be handed to them, and when life gets hard, they won't have any idea how to handle it. Instead, give your kids the tools they need to succeed, but not so much that they don't learn the actions and responses required to overcome the ups and downs. Let them make the mistakes and put in the hard work so that they can see firsthand that things aren't handed to you with a silver spoon. Complex financial instruments are dangerous liabilities. If you don't understand a financial tool or investment, it could destroy you financially. Even if it doesn't, it could rob you of your patience, time, and be an opportunity cost to many other investments without the complexities. Don't think you're doing yourself a favor by investing in complex financial instruments. Keep it simple and your returns will reward you. The investor of today does not profit from yesterday's growth. If you had luck in the past and did well with your investments, that doesn't mean that you'll automatically do well moving forward. You must constantly research, adjust, and align yourself with what's happening today, not with what happened in the past. It's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. Buying a fair company at a wonderful price is likely a one-time deal. You may earn quick profits, but from there you might incur losses. What Buffett's saying here is that a fair company doesn't have stability and reliability. A wonderful company, however, has a proven track record of being successful and consistent. Even though you pay a higher price for it, you'll likely see greater returns and realize fewer losses because of it. Measure things so you can improve them. Warren Buffett keeps a record of everything. He even has his first tax return from 1944. He does this to measure how he's doing and make changes when things aren't going as planned. When you measure things, whether it's your investments, your financial goals, your budget, or how you live your life, you can see what needs improvement and take action on it. Writing a check separates a commitment from a conversation. Think about when someone sells their house. Hundreds of people might walk through it, but only a few of them are potential real buyers. It's not a commitment until the check comes through, right? You can talk all you want, but until the words are on paper, there's no way to prove your commitment. I found these really interesting and I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.